Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In the previous video, we talked extensively about how we interpret an electrocardiogram. We talked about what the P wave, QRS complex, and T wave each represent, and they each represent a different electrical event of the heart. But what we can actually do is we can use the electrocardiogram to estimate a patient's heart rate, which is kind of cool. So I'm going to show you how to do that in this video. So first of all, here is a P wave. This is the QRS complex, and then here's a T wave. And all that is representative of one cardiac cycle. Okay? Here's a second cardiac cycle over here. And so if we want to estimate a patient's heart rate, we first have to calculate what's called the RR distance between the QRS complexes of two different cardiac cycles that are adjacent to one another. Okay. So basically, I just find the peak of the first QRS complex, which is actually the R wave, and then I go to the adjacent QRS complex of the next cycle with its R wave, and I just measure this distance in millimeters. All right. So our problem is estimate the patient's heart rate given their EKG shown over here. And I mentioned first I have to calculate the RR distance. All right. So let me actually zoom in here a little bit so we can actually see this a little bit better. And the nice thing about EKGs is they're generally recorded on this paper that kind of looks like graph paper, and each one of these squares represents one millimeter. So I just count over until I get to the next R wave. All right. So I start here. I go one, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and it, I guess technically because this is a little over to the right of the start of this red line right here, it would be a little bit less than ten, but we're just going to estimate it as ten millimeters, okay? And so what I would do is I would just take that distance, whatever it happens to be, and divide 1500 by that number, and that number would be the person's heart rate in beats per minute, okay? So I measure the RR distance, it turned out to be 10 millimeters. So the heart rate would be calculated by taking 1500, always this number right here, 1500, right? And then dividing it by the number of millimeters, which was 10. And so 1500 divided by 10 is 150, and the units would be in beats per minute. And so it's that simple. I just measure the RR distance, the distance between the peaks of each QRS complex, knowing that each one of these squares is one millimeter, and then Take 1,500 and divide by that number, and then that would be the heart rate in beats per minute. Okay, So we're going to do another example, and I want to do something fun with this. Um, if any of you have ever seen the original Spider-Man with Tobey Maguire, which as far as I'm concerned is the only good series, um, in the very first one towards the beginning of the movie where Norman Osborn has his transformation into the Green Goblin, we actually see his EKG, and he has what appears to be an extremely fast heart rate. We're actually going to look at this, and then we're going to calculate the Green Goblin's heart rate. So here's a sample of his EKG right here. I've already kind of segmented it off so we can see it more easily. And we're going to estimate Norman Osborn's heart rate during his Green Goblin transformation. So of course the first thing we want to do is measure the RR distance. And then we're going to divide 1500 by this number. All right. So here's the peak of the first QRS complex, the R wave. So we're going to count over. One, two, three, four, five. Six. Now, because this dotted line is a little bit after the peak over here, and this dotted line is a little bit before this peak, I'm probably going to say it's about 6.5 millimeters. Okay, so we're going to say Norman Osborn, or the Green Goblin's RR distance, is 6.5 millimeters. And so I'm just going to simply take 1500 and divide by 6.5. And generally speaking, you round this to the nearest whole number, and I'm getting that his heart rate is 231 beats per minute, which is really, really fast. In fact, most people don't even have a maximum heart rate that high when they're a kid. Um, if, you, if you know anything about exercise physiology, you know that a person's maximum heart rate can be estimated by 220 minus their age. Norman Osborne's probably around 50 years old, and so this is absolutely ridiculous because even under normal circumstances, you don't even get close to your maximum heart rate unless you're at maximal exercise. But hopefully this gives you a good understanding of how you determine a person's heart rate given their electrocardiogram. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.